לכן סימבוליסט השלום. וברכה. And welcome to culture buzz. Thank you, thanks a lot. Actually, we are the ones who should thank you because you are uh, kind enough to host us <laughs> at your studio in Florentin. With pleasure. And you were even kind enough to offer to play a bit. Of course. During our conversation. Yes. Chen, uh, you are well known, not only in Israel, all over the world, thanks to your wonderful uh, ability. to master the percussions. So how did it all start? Well, I guess like any other kid who want to play drums, I was five years old, going with my parents to a wedding, enjoying the drummer, and oops, I became a drummer, but not yet a percussionist. So I was playing the drums, and Then they tried to make me play the recorder and the piano, but I was quite torn about it. So I got a percussion. I got a fantastic teacher from the Israel Philharmonic, Alan Bohr, uh-huh. who made me being multiple marimba vibraphone, as well as playing solo. Because most of the percussionists are going into orchestra playing or band playing, and I was a um, marimba player. <laughs> So I became, you know, doing my own solo groups, chamber music. And, and this was in Israel? That actually started in Israel and just after the army, uh, serving in the army band with uh, Maestro Graziani, uh, I flew to Zico. New York. Zico. Zico, that's right. May he rest in peace. Yes. And I flew to New York and then another amazing teacher from the New York Philharmonic. And studying in New York later on, as you know, in Copenhagen, yes. and back to the Holy Lands. And this is the base where the kids grow up, and this is where I'm taking off and coming back. And I know that you are uh, invited quite often by the best venues mm-hmm. in the world, because people are eager to hear your very unique. percussion work okay. if we can if we can describe it as work and I was wondering when it comes to performances uh, where do you perform more in Israel or abroad hmm. um, I think basically there are no rules in our life and career is like a big wave of Going up, going down. And you are riding it. <laughs> we are riding it. Um, there were times we did um, long tours of six weeks, but non-stop in the States. Um, flying in and out to Turkey, which I missed a lot, by the way. So if the Turks are around this, I want to come back. So, you know, Turkey is around the corner for us. Right. And, you know, we were there five times a year sometimes. Mm-hmm. for a day, in and out, and now we do feel that the time changed a bit, and I spend more time in Israel, which is great as well, mm-hmm. it's time to renew yourself, to study, and they are a great audience in Israel, very spoiled by the way. Spoiled. Oh, the audience in Israel are very spoiled, yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Uh, let's talk a, a bit about your music. Uh-huh. Uh, how much... How much of it is your music, and how much of it is others? None of it is mine, and all of it is mine, I you would d- say. You don't compose? I do compose, but when I compose, I obviously take a bit of Stravinsky and Bach, uh-huh. and Gronich, and... Shlomo. Shlomo Gronich, and Arkady Duchin. Hey. And when I perform my Bach, I play my Bach... As a player in the Middle East, who have heard lots of Dumbek and lots of Israel Philharmonic. So one of the things I'm very proud and I feel good to travel with is being born in Israel and in the Middle East as a classical percussionist. Uh-huh. So when I go and I play yeah. this kind of Bach, It's different than American, 
who play Bach, or than a European. For sure it's different. Or Bach himself. Or Bach himself. And I got one, one of my teachers in New York was saying, how come you Israelis always know how to play Bach? Mm -hmm. No one really teaches you to play it, right? I said, yes, because my grandfather was German. I was born to a German culture in the family. So, oh, it's obvious that you go... Of course. But that written is something that he needs to teach other students for two years. If you don't have it, you have to learn it. And some of us as Israelis got so many things by nature, so it's great. And I'm very proud of it and feel good about it, especially when I give master classes and I teach abroad. So it's very easy to go straight forward and say, that's the way you do it. How important teaching is for you, both here and abroad? Uh, the truth is I don't teach. Uh -huh. I don't have private students. Um, I guess I am too hectic for it and hyper. And you know, I say, teacher, you have to have patience to your students and you need to have time. And my teacher from the New York Philharmonic once told me, uh, by the way, Hen, during the second movement of the Bach uh, concerto, you see, I was waiting you know, while uh, Zubin Meta conducting, I was thinking about you. And I said, wow, so you think about me not only for one hour a week, but when he go to the concert and he sits in the Lincoln Center with a great... So a good teacher is someone who really think about you over the week, between the lessons. And I realized that I can't do it yet. I'm too busy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm into the concert and I fly and I come back. And a student needs his teacher, he's like a kid. Uh -huh. And he cannot, you know, be away for too long. So I don't teach privately, but I do master classes a lot. All over the world. All over, which I like a lot. And uh, it's um, the third summer that I do Spain, Venice, and England. Italy, Venice, um, Spain, and England. Uh, two, core, two weeks course in each place, which goes for music and language. And there are great kids coming from all over the world and with percussion ensemble, so I have the chance to conduct and play with them, and it's wonderful. And it's very important. I think that uh, musicians in our age give them the energy, the support, the feeling of how should it go when you go on stage. Because many of them are great musicians, but they don't have the opportunity to perform, for example. Or they have very good teachers who are good teachers but not good performers. So there's something there which I think I push them in the right way, give them the right idea and information. When you go on stage, it's like whoosh, taking off, you know? And what, you, what would be the most important advice that you can give a percussionist making his first steps? The best advice, I think, is um, believe in what you do, love your music and love your audience. Don't be afraid of them. Love them. Hug them. And as Israeli, we know it, when you give your love to somebody, when you give good feeling, you get it back. And for me, a good concert is I give to the audience 10, they give me back 20. I go 200, they give me 1,000, and it explodes. And that's a good concert, you know. Let's talk a bit about albums. Okay. Uh, when you look at your albums, you have a favorite, you have a favorite composer, you have a favorite piece. I know that you try to describe your music as fusion. Mm -hmm. You take from everything. Yes. Um, I always say that um, if I could choose, I would be happy to be born around 17th century, playing um, Baroque, Renaissance music, you know. Uh, I'm very much attached to Bach. I mean, I compose my stuff listening to his music. Okay. I play his concertos, his sonatas. It works very good on marimba when you go and you play the cello suite or the original piano. Et 
open a prelude from the well-tempered clavier. <laughs> That's right. Beautiful. So it was... And you, and you sing as well? When you perform? Ah, yes, but I'm very shy. You're reminding me, you're starting to remind me Glenn Gould. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's a compliment. It is. So, I like this music a lot. And I play Bach. I do play contemporary music. I play Japanese music. And we spoke about Zico Graziani, uh, my former conductor. He said, there's not such a thing, bad music. Maybe you perform it, not correctly, but music is basically a good thing. You have to be smart and know how to play it. And I give a master class and I tell the kids, you know, if you play a piece which you don't like, you don't have to play it again and again. But the minute you play, do your best. I mean, make sure it sounds good, because it's you who is going on stage, okay? And, you know, I played Menachem Wiesenberg, and I played Noam Sharif, and I played whatever. And I played the way I believe it works. And Odette Zavi came over, one of the Israeli composers, and said, Wow, I mean, I know I wrote it, but it sounded so good and different. What did you do? I said, I just, you know, chew it, and I brought it out in my way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the great thing about being a musician and a soloist. Mm -hmm. You don't have to play the way the conductor wanted it to be. You play the way you think. And I can play one day... Um <laughs> Is it going the level? Um, level is going up like crazy. I mean, if talking about 15 years ago when I started doing more recitals and solos, we were maybe five around the world, you know. Today there are 50. Wow. At least. Wow. Which is good because competition is going up. And the minute I have competition, I become better. You know, because you look around and oops, you know, you have to have You have better. to become better. You have to become better. And what I do now a lot is um, I use this um, loop machine. It's, you, re you, it's record. A looper. you record? It's actually record live playing. And um, on top of the live playing, I do other things. So I do marimba, Wonderful. and at the same time, the marimba goes on and I go. You end up having a symphonic orchestra. In a way, yes. Um, it was it was funny. A friend called me today. And said, um, "What's up? How are you doing? I haven't heard from you for a long while." I said, "I'm so busy with myself for the last 30 years. I'm sorry." So it's it's a sort of thing. And I have a good friend who composed for me a lot, a Israel and Russian, um, Eugene Levitas. And Levitas composed from a concerto for percussion. Wow. I did with the Rishon Lezion Symphony Orchestra till this loop thing. And we just uh, put together a new album last Saturday. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. We spent lots of hours in the studio recording all the looping. So this marimba, vibraphone, tones of percussion, dumex, hand drums, etc. And he composed um, another composition called Zimba. What kind of music is it? I don't know. And then it goes... Cello is going so... 
different kinds of music. The whole spectrum. In a way, the whole spectrum and trying not to mix too much, not to have a salad. Huh? So you have to be careful what you choose, and especially you put the order in the right way. So you don't jump from Baroque to contemporary, back to ethnic. So I take them step by step. Fusion, but not confusion. Here you go. Good for you, yes. What can we wish, Chen Simbalista? Whoa. I mean, you have accomplished so much. You have been playing all over the world. I would start with um, peace and friendship, because if that is something we can accomplish, the rest is very easy. Just have to wake up in the morning, do your yoga, practice, it would be no problem. But I think if we can you know, relax a little bit the hysterical mood around the world, it will help everybody. Then music would be no problem. Trust me, I'll be there for you. Beautifully put. We couldn't have said it better ourselves. And I'm sure that your music is contributing Thank you. to that. Ren, we want to wish you all the best. Thank you for taking the time. Good luck and shalom. Shalom.